Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. About a year ago, I showed it was possible to edit video in DaVinci Resolve on a Latte Panda Alpha X86 based single board computer. Whilst this was impressive, the Latte Panda Alpha is an expensive board, and since that time, the power of lower cost ARM based SBCs has increased significantly. And therefore, in this video, I'm going to check out the video editing capabilities of three ARM based SBCs in the $50 to $100 price bracket. So, here we have our contenders, which are a 4GB Raspberry Pi 4, which has been fitted in this uh, rather larger heatsink sort of case, which clearly you need some cooling on a Raspberry Pi 4 for video editing. And uh, we've also got here a, a 4 gigabyte Odroid N2 and a Jetson Nano developer kit. And I've reviewed all of these boards in detail in previous videos, so I won't go through their specifications here. But the key thing to note is that all of these SBCs have got 4 gigabytes of RAM and they've also all got USB 3 ports. And the 4 gigabytes of RAM is really a minimum for successful HD video editing whilst the USB 3 ports allow our video files to be stored on a fast external drive. Specifically, I'm going to be using this SanDisk Extreme SSD to store our video files and projects, although you could be using any USB 3 drive. And I'd also note I'm using SanDisk Ultra Micro SD cards as the system drive on the Pi 4 and the Jetson Nano, whilst the Odroid N2 is running its operating system from this 16 gigabyte eMMC module. And in case you're wondering, I did consider including other 4GB ARM-based SBCs in this video. But of the boards I've got available, these three are the ones that handle video editing most successfully, so let's go and see how well they can perform. Right, I thought we'd start with the Jetson Nano, which I've got up and running as you can see, and it's connected to the SanDisk SSD which contains our video files. So if we go to the desktop, here we are running a Jetpack on the Jetson Nano, this is Jetpack 4.3, and Jetpack is a 64-bit distribution based on Ubuntu 18.04, and this version was launched in December 2019, so it's pretty recent. And for video editing, I've installed Kden Live by going to a terminal and entering sudo apt install Kden Live, and then putting in my password where requested and accepting the prompts. I've also installed the drivers for accessing an XFAT drive in Linux by entering a terminal again and entering sudo apt install XFAT fuse XFAT utils. And Without doing this, you cannot access an XFAT formatted drive like our SanDisk external SSD. So you may not need to do this, but most likely you will if you're accessing external media, external drives, which are storing video files. So let's launch Caden Live on the Jetson Nano. Let's bring it up like that. You see it doesn't take too long to uh, come up. And in fact, it runs pretty well here on the Jetson Nano. But I've done a few things to make it run even better on what, after all, is limited hardware for video editing. For a start, I've gone up to the menu and gone to Settings and uh, Configure Caden Live. And I've gone into Project Defaults and I've clicked Proxy Clips there and also Generate for videos larger than 1000 pixels across. And what this means is that Caden Live will generate proxy clips, which are temporary versions of our video files we'll be editing, lower quality versions of the files which will be used in editing but replaced with the final files when we render out the final video. So the use of proxy clips speeds things up when you're video editing on low-end hardware. We used to have to use proxy clips on all video editors not that many years or maybe decades ago. And the other thing I've done here, I just pulled the window down there so we can see it, is I've gone to a set of a custom project folder. If I click by there, you'll see I've set our project folder to be on the, here, the external drive. And the reason I've done that is it means that Caden Live itself and the operating system here will be running from the micro SD card, but all the video files that will be being accessed and all the proxy clips being accessed will be on our external drive. So we're spreading the load there to give the computer the maximum possible opportunity to run well with video editing. So that's what I've set up. And also here, if we go to a 
project settings for this particular new project Hayden Life created when it actually set itself up. You'll see that reflected. You'll see proxy clips are selected, generating there is selected. And if we look at cache data, you will see the cache data is going again to, uh, it just comes up in a second there, it is the extreme SSD, it's going over to there. So putting your temporary files, putting your video files onto another drive is a very good idea if you're video editing all on SBC. So let's just pull in a couple of clips. We'll go over there and pull in some clips. These clips are all 1080p MP4 files that sort of typical uh, consumer video quality. The kind of quality you'd upload generally to YouTube. Let's pull in, say, lots of ducks and say that uh, clip of uh, a deer. Let's pull those in. And uh, you'll see in a second as they come in that these are going to be proxy files. And because of that, there's a little sort of bars under here as the proxy is created. That's the disadvantage of using proxy files. When a file is first brought into an edit, the proxy file has to be generated, has to be transcoded. That'll take a little second. So we'll let that complete. And there it is as completed. You can see we've got a P for proxy on each of those clips. And it's also a good idea when you've brought in clips and generated proxies to, to save your uh, file. So we'll save this as, uh, say, a test. We'll call cool things test now and then, haven't you? There we are, we'll save that as a test. And let's now just drag some of these clips down to the, uh, the timeline down there. I think I'll also just uh, make that a little bit narrow. We can see that down there. And then we'll put the deer run down, say, there. And we'll maybe take a dissolve and uh, drag it down to there as well. And the mist entirely. Try and get it right, Chris. I'll do it right the second time, shall I? That's a better idea. We'll do it right the second time. And uh, we now play this. We go to the project monitor and uh, press play. You'll see it doesn't play too badly. It's not perfect. Remember, it's playing proxy clips. It doesn't have to be perfect here, just good enough to edit with. And this is working pretty well. We're going to get towards a, a dissolve in a minute, see how well it can handle that. That won't be quite so good, I imagine, but all oh, the excitement of killing us, isn't it? What's it going to be like? And immediately it starts to stutter a bit. It is going to do the dissolve, but it's not brilliant. That's not a perfect uh, editing experience, isn't it? But we can improve on that because we can go down here to the actual quality setting for the timeline and set it to preview. And if we now go and play that to resolve again, obviously it's using a slightly lower quality, but we will get a much more usable um, dissolve there coming up. So actually, this is quite a reasonably usable video editor. So we can, uh, you know, we can scrub this timeline pretty well, I think. Let's stop the thing, there we are. Um, goes back and forth. We can, you know, this, you could work with this. And uh, to prove that, let me just, uh, save this file and open a recent edit I put together, which is a bit longer. As you might imagine, I've been playing with this quite a bit. Oh, there's a shot of me standing on the beach in North Wales and then uh, sitting down on the beach in North Wales. And uh, we look at the project monitor. You see, what I've done here is to reproduce a chunk of one of my recent videos. So let me just uh, play this and it'll be playing the Explaining Computers intro and bringing up a little thing there, an intertitle, and then the, there I am on the beach having a little chat to you. That plays absolutely fine, no problems at all. It's now coming up to a few uh, cuts and dissolves and things. How's that gonna work? This is not working too bad, now it dissolves. That's, that's pretty reasonable, isn't it? I'm actually quite impressed with this. I've, I've messed around with this for a couple of hours. I've come to the conclusion I could edit perfectly happily using uh, the Jetson Nano, using Caden Live and Proxy Clips. So this is very good news. And uh, I would just point out, of course, that what I'm showing you here using a proxy clips on a single board computer equally well applies if you're trying to do video editing on a low end uh, PC. So there we are, Jetson Nano, very successful doing video editing. Let's move on to look at the other boards. Right, here I am back again. I've now got everything connected up and running on the Odroid N2. And if we go to its desktop, again, we're running a distro based upon Ubuntu 18.04, this time with a Mate desktop, but again, a 64-bit operating system. And I've installed Caden Live exactly as I did on the Jetson Nano, but I didn't have to install the XFAT utilities. They were already pre-installed to access the extreme SSD we're using here with its XFAT file system. So let's run up Caden Live. There's the icon over there. And this comes up uh, nice and quick. Remember, the operating system here in the software is running off EMMC on the uh, Odroid N2. You can take longer than that talk to run up a video editor on a standard desktop PC, can't you? So uh, let's uh, bring in our uh, file, exactly the same edit I created on 
the uh, Jetson Nano initially. Let's go to the Project Monitor and you'll see if I uh, play this footage. Again, playback is pretty good. It's not perfect, but the proxy files in preview mode here play perfectly well. That was a decent dissolve, wasn't it? Another one coming up. And uh, again, that plays through no problems at all. And if you want to scrub this timeline, you can do so. You can scrub with the multiple video layers there. And it's, it's usable, it's not absolutely perfect, but there's no doubt at all I can edit perfectly happily using a, an ODROD N2 single board computer. So again, this is a good result. Let's now move on to look at another board. Guess what? Here I am back again, this time with the Raspberry Pi 4 as our test SBC. And if we go to its desktop, here I'm running Raspbian, the latest version of Raspbian Buster. And again, I've installed Caden Live and I've installed the, the drivers for accessing the XFAT SSD. So let's run up a Caden Live. It takes a little second to come up on the, uh, the Pi 4, but it'll get there. Says he hopefully in a second. Yes, things are happening. And there we are, we've uh, loaded in Caden Live. And again, I will pull in our test file. All the configurations here are exactly as they were on the previous uh, SBCs. And hopefully this will come in. There we are, something familiar has arrived. Let's go to our project monitor and uh, play these uh, files, show the playback here, which again is, is pretty good. It's not brilliant on those wind turbines actually, but by and large it's pretty good. That wasn't quite a smooth transition from our proxies in this preview mode. And that uh, transition again is, is pretty good. So uh, this isn't too bad. I did actually try running Caden Live on a Raspberry Pi 4 back in what the middle of 2019 after it had just come out and it was a little bit unstable then but now that seems to have gone away. There's been a lot of work on the software on the Raspberry Pi 4 since it was launched and this seems to be stable. I've not managed to crash it in my uh, testing. You can uh, drag across the timeline, things work pretty well. So again, as with the Jetson Nano and the Odroid N2, we've got pretty good video editing performance on a Raspberry Pi 4. Right, what I'm now going to do is to measure relative performance by taking the same edit, the edit of the carbon Bay footage we've been looking at here, and rendering it out on each of the different SBCs to see how long it takes. So initially here we are on the Jetson Nano, so I'll go to render, and you'll see things are set up to render out to an MP4 file, and in fact I've generated a script of this setting, so I've got a script here, so we can render exactly the same script on each of the SBCs. So let's bring them all up on the screen at the same time and we'll start them off at the same moment. So let's start the script and away they go. But this is obviously going to take a little time, so let's speed on a bit. And here we are with the Raspberry Pi 4 about to finish and coming in at 2 minutes and 55 seconds to render out our 40 second 1080p clip. And if we speed on a bit more, we find that the Odroid N2 comes second on 4 minutes and 8 seconds. And then fast forwarding for a final time, the Jetson Nano completes the render in 5 minutes and 30 seconds. So let's put these figures on a table, also including the prices of the boards and my assessment of the quality of the editing experience that they provide. And while it's close, I think that the Jetson Nano has the most fluid timeline experience and playback, and so we get 7.5 out of 10, followed by a 7 out of 10 for the Odroid N2, and a 6.5 for the Raspberry Pi. And yes, I really should have marked here out of 20. Anyway, what we can definitively conclude is that the Pi 4 offers by far the best value as an RMSBC video editor, and certainly produces final files the most rapidly. And just in case some of you are wondering about the quality of the final output, let's go back to the, the Jetson Nano with right way of example and play the final test render, which is identical for all machines. Let's uh, move that full screen. And uh, you'll see hopefully that the quality of this final output renders absolutely fine. There's no problems with this at all. The fact we were using proxies during the edit process has no impact on, on the quality of the final output, which as you can see is a very good indeed. That's just to move forward a bit to get to some of those uh, transitions, probably about coming up in a second. Yes, that's beautifully smooth. There's no problems with the quality of this output. So as I hope I've proved to you, it is perfectly possible, all lovely and smooth again, to uh, edit video on a single board computer.
Personally, I find it amazing that it's now possible to successfully edit HD video on an ARM-based single-board computer that costs somewhere between about $55 for a Raspberry Pi 4 and what, $99 for a Jetson Nano. It really is extraordinary what you can now achieve on an ARM-based SBC, and it does make you wonder what we'll be doing on ARM-based SBCs in a few years' time. But now that's it for another video. If you enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.